Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Renner. So uh, today uh, we shall have a specific section that I define miscellaneous various because we shall have a sort of cocktail of a different um, ascultative finding. And uh, I have organized my lesson in uh, four pieces. The piece number one will be uh, two tests as usual before starting the specific session. Then okay. we shall have the session on uh, the session on various finding. The piece number three will be a, a series of tests, the final test of the course. And lastly, a uh, few slides on my conclusion. So it will be a little bit different from, from the past. So I, I start now with the test number one, that are two, uh, two findings. Let me, uh, let me select the appropriate file on my PC. Here it is. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, just keep uh, inform everybody. Uh, use your headset to uh, clearly hear the sound, please. Okay. So let's start with the uh, ascultatory finding number one. So is a, I, I, I realize that it's a, a difficult finding. We shall discuss this today, but let me give you some elements more. Uh, is a, a murmur, obviously, but uh, it uh, appear and disappear. There is a cyclic variation of this murmur. Uh, so let me uh, show you again. So uh, let's go with the, the, the test number one. And uh, you can vote now. Uh, I give you four possibility. One is uh, mitral valve prolapse. The other one is mitral stenosis. The other one is aortic regurgitation. And lastly, tricuspid regurgitation. So I shall leave you for the next 30 seconds with the test so that you um, will have the opportunity then to to share with me the results. Still 20 seconds. Okay, silakan teman-teman. Uh, uh, seperti biasa, joy, uh, di, di apa, touch di jawabannya. Nanti kan clear, uh, clear apa jawabannya ya. Di salah satu, nanti clear statistiknya. So please vote. We, we still have a part of our colleague that... Uh, okay, teman-teman, silakan yang belum mengisi. Okay, I, I stop now and I share with you the, the results. Uh, the results are the following. Uh, the most voted was tricuspid regurgitation. Someone think about mitral valve prolapse. And uh, then my minority mitral stenosis of our regurgitation. So let me show you which the finding is, and then I shall explain you why it could not be the other three possibility. So let's move to uh, to the okay. So now you have the results. And let me show you the uh, ascultative finding. So we have here the first sound, the second sound, first sound, second sound, first sound, second sound, and a regurgitant murmur. This is a systolic regurgitant murmur that is present, not present, present, decrease, not present. So why it cannot be aortic um, 
So we say uh, aortic regurgitation or mitral stenosis. Very simple because it's a systolic event while mitral stenosis and aortic regurgitation are diastolic. So mitral valve prolapse or tricuspid regurgitation. So this is a cyclic uh, murmur and there is no way uh, to have cyclic variation in mitral valve prolapse while it's typical of tricuspid regurgitation to appear and disappear according to the different phase of uh, respiration. This is the so-called Rivera Carvalho phenomenon. We shall see this uh, during the lesson that I'm going to have with you. But now let's listen to the previous finding watching the, the, the tracing. So this is a variation due to inspiration, like in this moment, or expiration. So let's move now to test number two. The test number two uh, will be also discussed today. Uh, we never showed this finding before, but please listen with attention. So I show you again. So, uh, okay. So now we can go to the test and uh, okay. And I show you uh, with, Okay, so sorry. Uh, okay, just a second. So the test number two uh, could be mitral valve prolapse, um, mitral stenosis, arterial septa defect, aortic stenosis. So three different possibility. Let me now go to the, the pooling. Okay. So we have uh, this different possibility, mitral bar prolapse, mitral stenosis, arterial septa defect, aortic stenosis. Please vote. So we still have 30 seconds, 20, 30 seconds. Please make your vote. So let's stop now. I share with you the results. So the, the large majority uh, was for arterial septa defect. Then the three other possibility were more or less equal as a probability. And okay, congratulations, arterial septa defect was the, the result. But now let's show you uh, the finding and let's explain why it could not be uh, the other possibility. So this is the, the recording. We have the first sound, the splitted second sound is a fixed splitted of the second sound as it happened in atal septa defect. And here is the murmur that is, as you can see, a diamond shape that means ejection murmur. Uh, it cannot be uh, martial stenosis 
because it's a systolic murmur, but I agree with you, the splitting could be confounding and uh, could be interpreted as a second sound and opening snap. It cannot be mitral bar prolapse because still we have an additional sound uh, that could be theoretically be, uh, theoretically be the, the click preceding the second sound, but the ejection, mur the murmur is ejection and is uh, uh, systolic. Uh, lastly, it, it cannot be uh, aortic stenosis, even if, even if is a, a systolic ejection murmur, uh, because it's too soft to be uh, uh, aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis is a systolic murmur due to the gradient and the narrowing. Uh, the systolic murmur in atrial septa deflect is the result of a flow increase through a normal valve. So let's listen together. This finding is a nice finding of uh, a fixed splitting of the second sound, ejection normal due to increased flow in a patient with the atraceptor defect. Good. So I, let me listen at a time. So we can move now to the, um, the lesson. Let me just close one file and opening the other one. Okay, just one second. Okay, so we, we, we can start. So today we shall speak about miscellaneous, various disorder that are uh, uh, just related to the fact that do not belong to uh, a, specific, uh, a specific situation. So let me start with uh, this uh, ascultatory finding. And uh, so this is something uh, strange let me check. Yes, something strange. And perhaps uh, Dr. Renan, uh, our colleague uh, that last time was with us, I hope that he's still with us, that uh, was surprised about the fact that uh, his patient had uh, something very strange, like, uh, like a radio signal, something like that. And we discussed it a bit, the onk. Uh, and I had a diastolic onk uh, presenting to you, but now uh, I have found I find a, a very rare um, auscultation case that I have in my collection, and uh, this is a. Uh, let me show you the, the case first, and then uh, we can discuss, and then we can ask uh, our colleague if he's still with us, uh, if it, this is the the finding that uh, he appreciated in his patient. So, but, uh, Dr. Rena, I don't know if you are able to interact with the, uh, the colleague here again and to ask if this was the finding. Yeah, I, I, I don't, yeah, teman teman yang kemarin bertanya. Uh, Apakah ini suara yang didengar uh, pertanyaannya ketika mencari uh, apa namanya mencari frekuensi ya seperti frekuensi suara radio. Uh, but I, I cannot directly interact with him. Uh, we'll hear later uh, through the chat. Okay. However, uh, so he knows, and this is a, a very rare uh, case of um, flail tricuspid leaflet. 
and this is a, a antistolic regurgitant murmur of the tricuspid valve that for unexplained and rare reason had a very strong musical component. So these, uh, these situations are relatively extremely rare. So let's say in other words, it can happen that a sound, a, a, a noise becomes musical, like in this case, for a, a certain kind of simultaneous circumstances, like the vibration of the leaflet, but in my opinion, more or less, more than anyone else is the configuration of the thorax that can act as an arc, as like an, an harmonic box, like the one that we have in guitar, for example, in, in, in other instruments. So let's listen another time. So this is very rare. Um, I can I can assure it is absolutely not common. Please take atten pay attention. <laughs> So let's go to the, the next case. And uh, this is a, a case with the tricuspid regurgitation. Today we shall face uh, problems related to the right side. So H is the tricuspid area. And um, uh, what I shall highlight is the importance of the Rivera Carvalho maneuver. So if we hear something like a mitral regurgitation murmur, more located in this area, more soft, uh, less intense, in a patient that theoretically, from the clinical point of view, could have a right side heart involvement, we must do Rivera Carvalho maneuver. The Rivera Carvalho maneuver is, uh, uh, is done in this way. You have just to put the diaphragm uh, of your stethoscope on each area to ask uh, your patient to gently make a profound expiration, not extreme expir expiration, and then to uh, make uh, a slow and uh, not extreme inspiration and then stop. Why not extreme and why slow? And then stop. In order to highlight ascoltative finding, if you make an ex extreme expiration or extreme inspiration, the thorax of the patient is under muscular tension and this uh, um, can impede optimal auscultation. So not extreme. Then has to be slowly and then he has to stop because the increased venous return that is the characteristic of Rivera Carvalho take some time, few seconds. So the, the increase of murmur is delayed if compared to the peak of the inspiration. So you have to train your patient first and then when he is well trained without auscultation, then you have to move to put your stethoscope on the thorax and then start uh, evaluating. So let's see together this case of Rivera Carvalho effect, and we shall have more than one case with Rivera Carvalho. <laughs> So uh, now we have uh, uh, listened without my comments, but I think that it's clear that there is a cyclic variation of the presence and entity of the murmur. So try to, to figure out the patient. The patient is uh, uh, making expiration, then inspiration, and then the murmur becomes more important. Let's uh, uh, listen together again. Murmur, expiration, and now again, inspiration. Now the patient is uh, 
perhaps stop inspiration and then decrease and so on. So this is a, a, a classical Rivera Carvalho maneuver. Now uh, we have uh, um, another case, very interestingly, because you will see uh, something that is relatively uncommon. So we have, uh, as, I, as I have done in previous uh, presentation, you will have a filtering of the sound. So we have first and second, first and second, first and second for three beats. Then a third sound will appear for different cycles. And then the tricuspid regurgitation with Rivera Carvalho effect will occur. Why a third sound? Because uh, if the tricuspid regurgitation is very important, in the right side section, in the right ventricle, it happens something that is similar to what I've described uh, some lessons ago for mitral regurgitation. In severe mitral regurgitation, third art sound can be detected. And this is due to the impact of the overload blood entity on the left ventricle. The same can occur in the right side if the tricuspid regurgitation entity is of particular importance. So in this case, you will hear first three normal beats, then a third sound will be added, and then the tricuspid regurgitation with cyclic variation due to inspiratory maneuver will occur. Is a, is a very, very nice example. And I propose again to you, but uh, let's start with uh, the two beats, the, the beats that are normal, then the third sound uh, occur. And uh, lastly, uh, we shall have the tricuspid regurgitation that uh, is the only regurgitation that can vary in such an extreme way due to respiratory finding. Okay, let's move to the next case. The next case is another uh, strange, I should say, ascultatory finding. Not strange, uh, is more, more exact to call rare. As I told you, uh, mm, tricuspid valve, as we know, can be affected as a secondary event in uh, uh, rheumatic valve disorder or pulmonary hypertension, any activity, any disease that can impact um, the right ventricle, the right side of the heart. And so tricuspid regurgitation can be the results of right ventricle dilatation, anus dilatation, tricuspid marcoaptation, and tricuspid regurgitation. But as the results of a, 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 another disease that is not primarily related to the, the tricuspid valve. In rheumatic valve disorder, uh, it's relatively uncommon, but not impossible, that the tricuspid valve is affected uh, by a stenotic process similar to the one that involves the mitral valve producing mitral stenosis. So it can occur that we have a tricuspid stenosis. Now I shall show you a, a very nice uh, example of uh, tricuspid stenosis that will have the same finding of the mitral stenosis. So first sound, second sound, opening snap of the tricuspid valve, 
and the uh, diastolic murmur through the tricuspid valve. The only exception is that also in this case, the Rivera Carvalho uh, exert his effect. And so you will see that you will hear that this uh, atrioventricular stenosis effect is variable uh, due to uh, respiratory maneuver. And so you will see this uh, uh, murmur increasing during inspiration and then decreasing uh, after uh, or during expiration. So let's go on this case. But before showing the case, let me explain a little bit what we are going to see. We have here uh, first sound, second sound, opening snap of the tricuspid valve, murmur. First sound, second sound, opening snap of the tricuspid valve, diastolic murmur. The same here. First sound, second sound, opening snap, murmur of increasing intensity. And as you will see, there is a sickly variation of this intensity. So let's listen this. And I shall show you several times, even with the closed eyes, because this is something in which you have to concentrate. So let's uh, listen the finding, uh, watching the tracing first. So basically, we have uh, the following finding. The finding number one is that we have uh, a rhythm with three sounds that are first sound, second sound, and opening snap is a high frequency. Then uh, the other finding is that we have uh, the diastolic rumble. But the third find that clarify the origin uh, of the, the finding is uh, uh, the variation. The variation that is a cyclic variation due to uh, uh, inspiration and expiration. So please follow my suggestion now. Close your eyes because you will be much more concentrated. Ignore everything. Please concentrate on the finding and you will appreciate the three sound rhythm, the presence of the rumble, and more than anything else, that the rumble is not constant as a intensity, but uh, as cyclic variation. Close your eye. So now, before we leave the tricuspid valve, I want to, to emphasize the concept of cyclic variation, uh, showing again, uh, consecutively, without my comments, two findings that we have just appreciated. The tricuspid regurgitation and Rivera Carvalho, the tricuspid stenosis and Rivera Carvalho, one after the other, without my comments, so that you will have a, a clear uh, message in terms of cyclic variation. Cyclic variation is the most important message of this part of the, the, the session, because I want to emphasize that uh, uh, maneuver are important during cardiac auscultation, and uh, the maneuver can be the respiratory maneuver, as in this case, or as I show you, during the lesson mitral stenosis, small exercise at the bed size to increase blood flow through the mitral valve and emphasize maximizing the entity of uh, the intensity of the sounds in mitral stenosis. So without my comments, but one after the other, I shall show you now again the tricuspid regurgitation cyclic variation and then the tricuspid stenosis cyclic variation. So tricuspid regurgitation. Thank you. 
And now number two, tricuspid stenosis. So the final message of this part of the lesson is uh, if you have a patient with a rheumatic valve disorder or in any case uh, right side of the road, don't forget to put the stethoscope on the H area here and to spend time, it will take four or five minutes in uh, maximizing the effect of auscultation with a respiratory maneuver. And again, I want to describe to you because respiratory maneuver seem a stupid uh, um, activity, but it's very important. First, train your patient and then make auscultation. Secondly, don't ask the patient to make a rapid inspiration, expiration, but it has to be relatively slow. And don't ask the patient to make extreme inspiration and expiration because they, this will... Uh, create contraction of the thorax muscle, and this will create some problems in your uh, auscultation. So let's move now to the D, B area, because the B area, as I told you, is the pulmonic area. And in the past lesson, we have heard sounds related to the possibility that the pulmonic component of the second sound will increase and increasing will give us an important message such as, oh, we have pulmonary hypertension. The second mm, message that uh, I, I want to emphasize is that uh, we can have uh, um, diseases affecting the, the pulmonic valve. And now we are going to discuss diseases that are capable to affect the pulmonic valve. And then there is a third possibility, the one that I mentioned you, uh, in the test preliminary to this lesson, uh, that we can hear the um, increased flow through the aortic valve, the pulmonic valve, sorry, due to uh, the fact that there is a shunt from right to the left side of the heart. And this, as it happens in the heart receptor defect, will increase the volume through a normal valve. And this will produce a murmur, but at the same time, the fixed second sound. So we have, in the pulmonic area, sounds related to the increase in pulmonary pressure due to left side diseases, for example. Uh, we can have increased flow and splitting of the sound in other septa defect, but, and now we are going to discuss, we can have diseases affecting um, the, the pulmonic valve. As in this first case, that is a case with uh, pulmonic stenosis. Pulmonic stenosis is a, is a congenital disorder and uh, uh, is conceptually uh, similar to aortic stenosis, but uh, uh, the ascultatory finding is almost identical. The, the difference are that in uh, pulmonic stenosis, this is the, the area in which you can, will better hear the murmur, while this is in aortic stenosis. Uh, aortic stenosis and pulmonary stenosis can irradiate to see. Of course, the medical history will facilitate the differentiation of two murmurs that are very similar, because in one case, you will have uh, either an old patient with degenerative aortic valve or uh, an old history of rheumatic disorder. While in the pulmonic stenosis, you will have uh, a murmur heard since the birth, because this is a congenital disorder. So let's listen together the, this example of aortic stenosis. Uh, first, watching the tracing, and then, uh, as we usually do, close your eye and concentrate on the moment. So what I want to emphasize is this in this case, because the next one will be a little different, we have a, a, a first sound and the murmur that uh, uh, is uh, strong, but uh, relatively uh, located in the middle of systole 
as uh, uh, the maximum entity. So close your eye and now concentrate on the murmur. The next one is uh, another pulmonic stenosis. In this case, is a more severe pulmonic stenosis because as you will see, the, uh, the, um, the peak of the systolic murmur is uh, relatively late in systole. And this is due to the fact that the gradient and, uh, is important, the narrowing of the aortic valve is important, and the left ventricle will take time to reach the maximum entity of contraction and therefore of ejection. So let me show you the case again, but please close your eye because then I shall show you the previous one and this one, one after the other, in order to emphasize one aspect that in ejection murmur is important and is the timing of the peak. It's clear that in the second one is relatively late if compared to the previous one. And these are the results of different severity of the two stenosis. So again, uh, now uh, let's listen this uh, um, this finding, closing our eyes, and then I shall show you the previous one and this one without comments, just to emphasize the importance of the peak. So let's go ahead. Now I want to show you uh, the two murmur, one after the other, so case number one and case number two. Uh, and the aim is to emphasize the fact that in the second is really late if compared to the previous one, the peak. So close your eye and Second case. So, uh, this is pulmonic stenosis. Sometimes, when there is important pulmonary hypertension, on when there is the so called idiopathic pulmonary dilatation, in other words, a dilatation of the pulmonary artery without any reason. In this instance, it can occur that the pulmonic valve is uh, uh, regurgitant, is insufficient. So there is a regurgitation of the pulmonic valve. Is a, a relatively rare finding, and you can differentiate this uh, because of two specific findings. One is that uh, it is maximally located in B and also C, differently from what happens in our regurgitation that is not heard at all on B, almost impossible, is very well heard here. And secondly, again, respiration is helpful because also in this case, as all the right side murmur, the Rivera Carvalho effect is important. So I should show you a rare case of uh, uh, pulmonic regurgitation with uh, uh, respiratory variation due to the so-called Rivera Carvalho effect. So let me uh, explain something about the tracing. So we have first, first sound, second sound, regurgitation. First sound, second sound, regurgitation. As you will see, the regurgitation 
has different intensity according to the uh, cyclic variation uh, induced by respiration. And uh, what is important is that uh, uh, the murmur is like our regurgitation is high frequency murmur. In this case, it does not cover the entire diastole. So please close your eye, concentrate on the murmur, consider that the murmur is diastolic, consider that the murmur is a high frequency, and you will then appreciate how the cyclic variation will represent a characteristic finding, also in this case, that will help you to understand that this is a right side murmur. So close your eye and please concentrate on the murmur. So the next case uh, is uh, still a pulmonic finding because I show you uh, a pulmonic stenosis. I show you a pulmonic regurgitation. Sometimes, as it happens from the aorta, both things can coexist together in uh, a pulmonic disease. And uh, this is an interesting case of uh, pulmonic stenosis and pulmonic regurgitation in the same case. Oh, in this case, the patient has been asked to stop breathing in order to maximize the auscultation of the following finding that uh, I ask you to, uh, to listen with the attention. So we have the first sound, but immediately afterwards a click. This is an ejection click of the pulmonic valve, a systolic murmur, second sound, diastolic murmur. Is uh, like in aortic bicuspid um, stenosis with aortic regurgitation, but you can see that uh, uh, this is uh, much more soft than a, a sound that comes from the left side. So please appreciate first sound, click, ejection murmur, second sound, and diastolic murmur. So the last example that I want to show you uh, related to the right side uh, finding is the one that I showed you before during the test is an atrial septal defect. As I was mentioning, the atrial septal defect uh, is uh, usually heard, I should say systematically heard on the pulmonic area that is B, because in this area you will have uh, all the findings related to the pulmonic valve um, um, alteration. You will uh, uh, the fixed second sound that is the result of the delay uh, component of uh, the, our, the, the second sound, the delay pulmonic component of the second sound, and then the systolic flow that is the result of uh, increased flow to the pulmonary valve. So, as I mentioned before, we have first sound murmur and second sound splitted and fixed. So, please close your eyes and concentrate. Uh, more than anything else of the splitting second sound is split it and fixed. So now we move from uh, the left side 
we go on the from the right side we go back to the left side to spend time with uh, an interesting disease that is a uh, hypertrophic obstructive subaur and um, this slide uh, is being prepared in order to remember some of the uh, important aspect of this uh, disease here we have on the left in this slide, uh, in this picture, you will see some uh, typical finding of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and uh, namely the HAR, I was mentioning the uh, hypertrophic interventricular septum, the postlateral wall, the but more than anything else, the anterior movement, the anterior systolic movement of the mitral valve that produce in the heart flow tract, what is called uh, uh, heart flow subaortic uh, obstruction. You can also appreciate, but this is something related more to echocardiography, that here there is a, a, a white on the septum, this is called uh, fibrous callus, is a, a sort of uh, systematic damage that the mitral leaflets produce on the endocardium of the septum day by day, day, by day for years. And this is, and this what, is what happens. Uh, we have an important turbulence in the heart flow track that corresponds to the obstruction that here is well, well depicted. If you uh, move to the old fashioned but still extremely useful uh, M mode, and I strongly suggest to, I was emphasizing the importance of M mode in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy because it gives us information that are um, otherwise really difficult to be uh, found. And in this M mode, that perhaps is not so well appreciated by young people, but those that belong to different generations know the importance of that mode. You can see that here is the systolic movement and this is the obstruction, but more than anything else. Uh, rapid feeling, arterial feeling, and delayed closure. The, yeah, well, so we have here the, the classical area for hypertrophic uh, pulsation finding. Because hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can be without uh, without finding okay well, let's uh, let's explain that uh, in hyper hypertrophic cardiomyopathy the auscultation finding are present if there is obstruction in the absence of obstruction there is no auscultatory finding that can suggest us the presence of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy so if there is obstruction this is the area where the findings are appreciated because uh, there is a mixture of ejection and murmur and regurgitant murmur. The ejection is due to the, uh, to the, sorry, to the uh, turbulence within the outflow tract, while the regurgitant can be the results of a coexisting mitral regurgitation due to the traction that the, the distortion of the mitral valve produced. So let's listen now a very interesting case in which we have three normal beats. Then we have the fourth sound appearing because as I show you, the diastolic component become important in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So important that the mitral valve closure uh, is delayed. Look at here. So this is a arterial wave that should go here, but the delayed closure is the results of uh, very important pressures in the left ventricle. And this produces a forced sound because the atrium contracts against a very stiff left ventricle. And then the, the mixed uh, shape murmur, I call mixed shape murmur of hypertrophic uh, cardiomyopathy will occur. So let's uh, listen this murmur. And then we have uh, three different examples of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with the, the different modality in which the murmur can occur. So let's listen to this interesting case first. I repeat, we have three normal beats, 
then the fourth sound will occur. And lastly, the regurgitant murmur will be appreciated. Now you will listen the murmur. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the murmur is systematically confined to late systole, mid late systole, because the obstruction take times to develop. If we return to the previous slides here, where we have a mode, you will see that if this is the beginning of systole, then it will take time and interval to uh, have obstruction developed. So this time is time without obstruction. Without obstruction with, means without murmur. And I shall emphasize in the next finding, not in this one, the next finding, the fact that the murmur can be late because the obstruction does not occur immediately. So let's listen again, this case with the first and second sound, fourth sound, and then the murmur of the obstruction. is uh, another typical ascultatory finding in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And as I was emphasizing before, the, the murmur is delayed because the obstruction does not occur immediately. So, there is no typical finding in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's a sort of mix of murmurs, and you have to suspect the presence of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy more on the clinical uh, part of the, the, the approach to the patient than to the ascultatory finding, because the ascultatory finding is not typical, but can be uh, make a confusion with the um, aortic stenosis or mitral regurgitation. Let's listen to the next finding that is still in a patient with a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. You will see in this case, the murmur is also radiated to the cilia. So let's spend some minutes of these uh, two findings. So we have two findings of the same disease in two different patients. In the case number one, the systolic component due to the obstruction is prevalent in terms of auscultation. In this second case, the systolic component of the mitral regurgitation is more relevant in terms of auscultation. And this is um, typical of aortic, uh, subaortic stenosis because uh, the ascultatory finding can be either a mix of uh, obstruction and regurgitation or more one respect to the other. So there is no rule. That's the reason why you need to be helped by the medical history and also the electrocardiogram then in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can be uh, very suggestive if, for example, you have Q-wave, large uh, QRS complex and the abnormality of the repolarization. So I shall show you the two cases, case one and case two, without my comments, one after the other. But I want to emphasize that there are both cases with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. In the case number one, the systolic obstructive component is prevalent. Um, the other one um, uh, is uh, the mitral regurgitation component. Okay, so case number one.
in case number two. So, two completely different findings. So, the third, this case is uh, another story because we have a murmur better aired in this area uh, that is from D irradiated to H. So, it's better aired in this area with a strange irradiation that is from D to H. So, this is a case of a ventricular septa defect that usually has a murmur that is similar to mitral regurgitation, very similar, but the irradiation is not to the axilla, but exactly the opposite side, because it goes from the left to the right heart. So let's listen to this for uh, a moment. So very similar to mitral regurgitation, but the irradiation help us. <laughs> so these last two cases are two cases that are strange. The first one is a patent ductus arteriosus is usually better heard on the pulmonic area. And uh, the murmur is a continuous murmur, systolic and diastolic component of the murmur are well appreciated. It's a continuous murmur like in a fistula. So let me show you again. And the last murmur of this session is uh, uh, on the mesocardium in the, on C, and you will appreciate the pericardial rub in a patient with <clears throat> acute pericarditis. Uh, there has been no filtering in this case. It was collected in density per unit, but um, it was necessary because these are very high frequency, low intensity sound that are completely different from the other one. So as you will see, this is a more, it cannot be considered a murmur, is a, is a noise due to the fact that there is friction between the epicardial wall and the pericardium that are inflammated, there is no fluid, and this movement will create a, a, this kind of rub that will correspond to the pain the patient has, especially when deep inspiration is performed. So let's listen again. So, Dr. Reina, I should stop now, and yeah. I suggest to do the following. Uh, I make a stop of four or five minutes uh, so that I can uh, uh, have also my computer plugged again because I'm in, in a place where the cable does not arrive. And I think that we can start again in a uh, in few minutes. So, in the meantime, you can collect questions so that we can give an uh, uh, answer to questions and, uh, and then we shall start with the second part. There were several tests in order to um, verify the interaction. So a few minutes and I shall be ready uh, with you again. Okay. Um, Professor Rizzo, there was only one question here. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, asking about, uh, I, is this, I think, I think mistype here is not libera carpal, but 
Rivera Carvalho. So okay. it's Rivera. So so could you uh, make a, a short statement about that again? Because there's some question about it. So what is the Rivera Carvalho? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Rivera, first of all, Rivera and Carvalho were two professors in uh, Mexico uh, yeah. because uh, 60, 70 years ago, one of the best uh, schools of cardiology was in uh, uh, Mexico City, uh, mm -hmm. where there was the so-called Instituto de Cardiologia de Mexico. Uh, in that period, giants of the clinical approach to cardiology were there. In fact, more or less everything that we know about electrocardiography was uh, uh, explored there. So it was a fantastic school, both for uh, electrocardiography, auscultation. So it was really a, a classical cardiology uh, arena. So Rivera and Carvalho described the effect of uh, uh, breathing maneuver, respiratory maneuver, on the right side murmurs. And the main concept is that if you make a deep inspiration, there is an increased venous return to the thorax because the deep inspiration produces negative pressure in the thorax. And due to this negative pressure in the thorax, the blood will return from the body. So deep inspiration facilitate returning of the blood from the body because of different pressure due to the fact that inspiration produces negative pressure in the thorax. So the Rivera Carvalho maneuvers um, take advantage of the fact that inspiration will increase venous return. But if increased uh, venous return occurs, the right ventricle is overload. And overloading the right ventricle, even if temporary, a uh, hemodynamic effect will occur, for example, on tricuspid regurgitation, because due to the fact that the right ventricle enlarge, there will be more systolic ejection of uh, murmur of blood, and this will increase the murmur. In mitral in tricuspid steno stenosis, more blood will pass through the tricuspid valve, and as we do with exercise for mitral stenosis, we do with Rivera Carvalho for tricuspid stenosis, increase the return to the right side means increased flow through the, the, the mitral, the tricuspid valve. So the main effect, again, of Rivera Carvalho maneuver is take advantage of the negative pressure in the thorax, increase venous return, and increasing venous return uh, emphasize all the uh, sounds because more blood is either passing or ejection, and this will increase the entity of the murmur. Okay, <clears throat> I think that's the uh, uh, answer question from Dr. Rahmat. So this is uh, another question from my seniors, my teacher, Dr. Anna Ulfa. He's a, she's a cardiologist and pediatric cardiologist. Is there any manipulation which could increase the murmur of Hockham? Uh, this, Sorry. this is a good question and for example, um, the squatting, uh, Valseva maneuver squatting, squatting. Can, can produce this, yes, can produce this. Squatting Valseva maneuver can affect the entity of um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy more and more, even if uh, hypertrophic, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy uh, is a situation that respects few rules because the fact that is dynamic and a mixed mechanism of the murmur, ejection, regurgitation, will uh, make a situation that is more or less unique because you never know in, in a patient if uh, the regurgitant part is more important than the systolic in terms of sounds or the opposite. Uh, yeah, continuing question, question about the hokum. As you know, uh, the, the stenosic, or, um, intracardiac stenosis, intraventricular stenosis could happen mid, mid, uh, in the mid left ventricle or at the left ventricle output track at any, any places. Uh, could you describe whether the best way to, to um, distinguish or, or to, to probably to guess 
uh, which the the um, origin of the 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 sound or which part the most um, stenotic one. No, no, it's a, it's a very, very clear question, a very clear question, because uh, uh, I agree, two possibilities can be present, but uh, personally, I have no suggestion, no, 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 no finding that can, be, can help me in understanding if the obstruction is an upper or lower level within the left ventricle, uh, outflow tract or mid ventricle. Okay. This is another question from uh, some doctors here, a doctor here. He asked about the uh, in in his med school or her med school. Uh, he I have traditionally been taught only four places uh, to listen murmur. So I think the based on this, the the side of the valve. But you already uh, taught about the many position A B C D F G H as you mentioned in the first lesson. I think. Uh, uh, you you have to go back to the first lesson. I, I don't I don't know whether this uh, doctor uh, follow your your uh, lecture at the first first yeah. session, right? Yeah, but yeah. Let me, let me uh, highlight one concept. Um, so uh, the thorax is a complex, and yes. the murmur can have entity somewhere and can irradiate somewhere else. So. The, the good auscultation is the one that systematically map the thorax with uh, uh, a specific order. Uh, what we, I do is to start here, then I move here, then I go down, down, down to the axilla, then I go back, because then you need to make comparison. And when you identify a place where the maximum intensity is, and then you want to differentiate with something else, Perhaps you have to return to that place. So I think that the, the current resultation has no a fixed area, but is mapping of the thorax. And uh, the area that I, I presented are just to make an orientation and to understand where uh, if sound is better aired if compared to another one. But so mapping uh, of the thorax is the fundamental aspect. Okay, uh, this is the last question probably before we go to break. Uh, does referral carvalho maneuver have an effect on the other right valve relation, such as pulmonary stenosis or regurgitation? Uh, yes, uh, as I show you, there are effects also on pulmonary uh, findings, but these effects are much less prominent than the one on the tricuspid valve. So Rivera carvalho is a maneuver for tricuspid finding. But this does not mean that the same effect can be appreciated also on the pulmonic phenomenon. But this can occur or not, while on the tricuspid area is always is almost systematically present. Okay. So um, now we have uh, some tests that uh, are useful to uh, uh, highlight also. Uh, situation or different uh, okay now these are the conclusion okay stop sharing okay okay so we have now uh Okay, 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 okay. So we have a, a series of tests. We have six tests. So uh, this is the test number one. As usually, I shall show the test and we shall make the pulling afterwards. So be concentrated, close your eye because the best modality to appreciate sounds is to have close eye. Okay, I, I shall show you again. Let I want to be sure that, okay, I shall show again. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, we have now um, three possibility, uh, mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, or I don't know. So please vote. <clears throat> okay. Silakan teman-teman dipilih jawabannya supaya kita lihat evaluasi kita dari uh, beberapa kali penyelenggaraan acara ini. Oke. Okay. Few seconds, still few seconds. <coughs> Please vote. We have 20 seconds more. Okay, so let's stop. And uh, these are the results. So the majority was large majority was for mitral regurgitation. Uh, congratulations is uh, is right is okay. I'm I'm happy for that uh, is the right answer. Uh, it was not so at the beginning, and uh, so let let me um, let me show the the recording with the tracing. You have here that the first sound, second sound, regurgitation murmur, third sound. So let's listen again, just watching. So next test is the following. Please close your eye. So we have three possibility uh, is aortic stenosis, mitral valve prolapse, arterial septal defect, I don't know. Please vote. We have still uh, some seconds, 20, 30 seconds to vote. Fifteen seconds. Ten. Five. Okay, that's all. And I shared the results. We have the large majority um, stating that the murmur is a heart stenosis, one over two. And then, and again, congratulations. The, the, the answer is the right one. And uh, again, I, I have the test of the, the first part of the course it is uh, much better than before. Thank you. So let's go to uh, test number three and this is sorry this is the recording and you will see there is the the first sound second sound and the rush ejection murmur that you can easily hear now Good. Uh, let's go to the third one. So please be concentrated. More difficult, 
but I want to show you again. This was recorded. Uh, I can tell you this because, of course, uh, this is not. Uh, this was recorded on the apex uh, on uh, the heart. So before uh, making uh, a conclusion, please remind that uh, this was recorded at the apex and uh, this is the test number three uh, I share with you. So we have the following possibility, uh, artery regurgitation, mitral bar prolapse, mitral stenosis. Twenty seconds. Ten seconds. Five. Okay, these are the results, and uh, matter of prolapse was the most considered uh, chance. A mitral stenosis one over three vote for mitral stenosis only a mi minority artery regurgitation. Uh, the answer is mitral stenosis, and uh, let me show you why. Because uh, this is a, a, a diastolic murmur, and I realize that mitral stenosis is one of the most difficult, but uh, uh, I think that there are peculiar characteristics. Uh, again, the, the auscultation site is the same at the apex but we have the first sound, the second sound, and the opening snap. So this could be confounding because someone could have interpreted as this the first, this the second, and this a click. But there is the diastolic murmur that uh, um, does not fit with the diagnosis of mitral valve prolapse. So let's listen together again, uh, watching the, the, the video because this will emphasize the position of the first sound, second sound, open his neck and rumble. So the test number four is, uh, um, Okay, it has been recorded on uh, the mesocardium, close to the left sternal border. I show you again. I start with the polling, so uh, you can vote now. Uh, you have uh, the following possibility, mitral bar prolapse, mitral stenosis, heart regurgitation, and uh, I don't know. Please vote.
few seconds, 10 seconds, five, four, still someone can vote. Okay, stop sharing. And, uh, oh, this is a very, very big and good result because almost everyone was convinced about our regurgitation. Uh, I'm satisfied because our regurgitation is a, a difficult ascultatory finding. And uh, this is the recording, just listen together. We have first sound, second sound, a nice aortic regurgitant murmur, and this is an accompanying murmur in our regurgitation. Let's listen together. Good, good, extremely good. Let's go to test number five. Pay attention, be concentrated. Um, be concentrated, we are on the uh, um, apex of the heart. And uh, this is the ascultatory finding. Please concentrate. At a time. So let's go to the test. So we have the following possibility. Uh, the, sorry, okay the possibility are uh, Arctic, sorry, 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 no, 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 no. Um, okay. No, no, uh, is, there is an error. Okay, I don't know why there is this error, let me, check if there is okay uh, sorry uh, for uh, the, the confusion so this is uh, okay just a second okay just to avoid confusion i uh, real uh, i have you the test listen again Let's go on uh, pulling and uh, okay, I launched the poll. Please vote, please ignore the, what I showed before. So we have uh, mitral bar prolapse, fourth sound, atrial septal defect. Please vote. So we have 15 seconds more. Ten. Five. Okay, stop here. And uh, I share the results. And again, the, the large majority was absolutely right. This is mitral bar prolapse. And uh, the fourth heart sound and atrial septal defect uh, 
can be reasonable. The atrial septal defect could be reasonable because we have this murmur, the splitting of the sound, the fourth sound can be confusing. But let me show the tracing that will help you. And uh, here it is. You can appreciate the presence of the first sound, the click, the less historic murmur, and the second sound. First sound, click, less historic murmur, second sound. So uh, let me make some comments of these five tests. Uh, in four, the results was extremely good because we had uh, more than half of the, the participant uh, correctly um, identifying the, the, the finding. Um, the only one that was uh, difficult, but I'm not surprised, was mitral stenosis because it's a low frequency sound. Uh, it's certainly the the most uh, uh, difficult to be identified. So I'm not surprised in, in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a training of auscultation, mitral stenosis is certainly not the easiest thing. But uh, the majority of people, Dr. Rena, has been able to correctly identify mitral regurgitation, heart stenosis, <coughs> heart regurgitation that is not easy, and um, mitral var prolapse. In, in, the, in the mitral stenosis, there was a little bit of confusion with matter of our products, Collapse. but I told you uh, one day, if you like, we can discuss about matter of our products in one session because it's, a, it's my old um, and continuous passion, both from the clinical and pathophysiology point of view. So I don't know if you like to stop for some questions because before concluding, I am two slides that I want to show to the community. But it's up to you to decide when these two slides have, it, have to be presented. Okay, uh, I think before we go to the slide, uh, can we have some question? Uh, oh, yes. Is it? Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, okay, this is a question from Dr. Gilbert Lehman. Dear Professor, thank you for the lecture. I'm wondering, can you please kindly show us how, how the how the patient should inhale and exhale to produce Rivero Carvalho phenomenon, and how you usually tell the patient to do this maneuver. And the second one, why the atrial septal defect, the S2, is fixed and not affected by the respiration? Thank you. Okay, so uh, see, I'm watching the, the yeah. question in the same time. So, um, okay. Uh, let, I shall show you how Rivera Carvalho has to be done. Uh, um, I, I shall mimic what I do if I have a patient in front of me, because exactly what I do with my student. So let's suppose the, I have a patient, I tell the patient, uh, okay, uh, in a few seconds, I shall ask you to do what I'm going to show you, and uh, please make exercise with me. So when I shall tell you to do this maneuver, please do the following. Put the air away out of the, the, the thorax and I ask to do. Then when I shall ask you to breathe, you will do something like that. So this is the rhythm, not extreme. And then not extreme. But the patient has to do this when I tell the patient to do that, because I have to put my stethoscope and I have to do, okay, put the heart away. Then I have to listen, to memorize for some seconds, enough to memorize, but not so long to create the stop to the patient. And then I tell the patient, okay, take a deep breath. Stop, I tell stop because I don't want it to be extreme. So this is the rhythm. This is exactly what I do. As far as the atrial septa defect, this is a, 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 an interesting question because the, the fixed splitting of the atrial septa defect is not affected by inspiration. On the contrary, splitting is 
uh, affected by respiration in the absence of atrial septal defect. Let's tell you what happens in the absence first. If we have a, a normal heart, especially in kids, where you can appreciate splitting, what happens is that during the Rivera Carvalho, deep inspiration, an amount of blood will return to the heart. The right ventricle will be overloaded. This will create a, an increased need of ejection. This increased need of ejection will prolong the ejection. And so that since the second sound is the end of the ejection, because it's the end and then the pulmonary valve close as the aortic valve will close, this closure will be delayed if compared to the aortic one. So this will happen in a normal patient. If uh, there is atrial septa defect, the increase in, uh, um, in, in blood return will be equalized by the presence of uh, a communication to atria so that the, the, the pressure in the duator will be equal and this will create an equilibrium between the two pressure in the two chamber with the uh, right ventricle that will be systematically and fixed delayed if compared to the left ventricle because the right ventricle is systematically overloaded by the fact that there is shunt coming from left to the side, the right. So the delay in atrial septal defect is uh, existing regardless of the breathing because there is amount of blood that goes from left to right that is more than we can expect from the returning increase due to breathing. That's the reason why in atrial septal defect, second sound is splitted systematically, not because of breathing, but because of the delay due to the shunt uh, arriving from left side. Yeah, it's clearly because of the sun and causing the delay of the closure, right? So, uh, doctor, this is a question from Dr. Yunus Simarmata. You can see also here, professor, uh, which best part of stethoscope to hear murmur, diaphragm or bell part? Oh, this is, I think uh, Professor Iristo has explained a lot about this at the first session. Is that different to hear fine high intensity murmur or low intensity murmur? Another question is in Indonesia, many obese patients or in women which, uh, in which breast can interfere the osseous position. Please give some advice and how the best way to achieve a good, good heart murmur okay. sound. Let's answer to the first question first. Uh, diaphragm and stethoscope uh, and a bell, bell give you advantages not on low intensity or high intensity, but on low frequency and high frequency. The intensity of the sound is the, the entity of the volume and the volume will be, and the, the sound will be better heard. On the contrary, what make a difference is the kind of sound. For example, the rumble of mitral stenosis is better heard with the bell. The ejection murmur of aortic stenosis is much better heard with the diaphragm. As far as obesity, uh, of, of course, no, no doubt, and uh, there are no tricks. And for the breast, uh, what uh, is to be done is in order to maximize the auscultation, the mitral valve area is to uh, uh, take away and to put the, the stethoscope below the breast is the only way to, to be closer to the, to the thorax. But obesity is, of, of course, is an unsurmountable problem. You have to tell your patient to have a good diet. I don't hear you, uh, Dr. Renan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this uh, answered the question from Dr. Yunis Marmata. And for those who want to see the first session, you can open the, our YouTube channel of uh, YKFE, Yayasan Cardiovascular Indonesia. And there's an explanation of, about how to use stethoscope, which part use the bell, which is the uh, diaphragma. 
uh, by Professor Eliseto at the first session. Okay, Professor, uh, you can continue. So let's go to my uh, last two slides because these last two slides uh, emphasize some concepts that I think that we have to keep uh, in our mind. So these two slides comes from very old paper and uh, are, I think, uh, concepts that we have to keep in our mind. And let me, okay, open. It's okay, just a moment. Okay, okay, fine. So uh, this is a statement that comes from a, a whole paper. It was written 20 years ago, but I think that nowadays is even more um, prominent as a concept as before. And uh, in this nice editorial on the American Journal of Medicine, it was stated that uh, uh, nowadays, 20 years ago, nowadays even more, tests produce more tests. So we need a filter and the filter has to be in our hands and uh, auscultation has this potential role. Second concept that because of this, it was written 20 years ago, uh, we need to uh, teach these things again. We need to have time in medical faculty to teach physical diagnosis, to relearn if necessary, because nowadays, as it was written 20 years ago, the passion and the attention for technology is becoming more and more relevant if compared to the clinical approach that is unsurmountable. And that's the reason why at that time uh, it was stated that uh, uh, future faculty reorganization should be seen in order to emphasize this aspect. But in another paper two years before, uh, there was uh, an attempt to explain why cardiac auscultation uh, was becoming less and less object of attention um, because phonocardiography was any longer paid. Simple reason, but enough. There was echocardiography uh, without any doubt, mm, certainly uh, prominent. And then uh, what was considered an error that nowadays is no longer as uh, it was before, um, it was stated, it was observed that uh, examination of the patient was not considered something mandatory. That is a big error. So the conclusion of that paper that uh, Professor Adolf was one of the prominent cardiologists at that time in, uh, in, um, in um, United States medicine, uh, we, you say that we need uh, teachers to uh, revive this interest because at that time it was stated that this was an urgent uh, situation because uh, this situation should be corrected as early as possible, not late, and nothing has been done in 20 years because uh, uh, the very obvious concept was the following. You cannot learn auscultation with books. You have to learn with uh, someone that knows, but if the senior teacher will not any longer present, who will teach? And the, 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 the final statement was, will the blind then lead the blind? So my, my, final, my final recommendation, uh, Dr. Renan, is yes. that uh, uh, I think that uh, we have uh, a future that yes. because of COVID will become more and more difficult for medicine and uh, what we have in our hands will become more and more important because it is not said that all the things that you are in the hospitals will be available for everyone, especially now that uh, at least this happened in Italy, but I think that happens in Indonesia, all over the world, most of the facilities are devoted to infected patients. And so the other one have to be treated, but in order to be treated must be well diagnosed but the good diagnosis comes from clinical uh, approach. That is, of course, not only cardiac auscultation, it's a medical history uh, to see the patient, to speak with the patient, and to make an important filter, and then to address the technology, the potential, and the facilities in the appropriate way, and to give the right uh, diagnosis procedure to the right patient. 
So my recommendation at the end of this nice course that I have the opportunity to share with you and with uh, Indonesian colleagues, we have all things in our hands uh, that we have not to ignore. And the old things never disappear. It always happens. So we have not to be, uh, to pay so much attention to the innovation, but we have to keep always in mind that uh, what is tradition will never disappear. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, Professor Richard. It's a great explanation and uh, clearly how important is auscultation as our first hand weapons during this pandemic, especially uh, to, uh, to have a good screening uh, and the main way to, to then to send uh, our patient the most necessary uh, modalities to go, the echo echo to go to other modalities. Uh, just just curious to know whether whether you still have phono new new edition of phono in uh, phono cardio in Italy because you don't have that right now in Indonesia anymore. Um, unfortunately, uh, not. I'm, I, I always look for something old, uh, yeah. hidden somewhere, forgotten somewhere. But uh, I've been really unable to reconstruct uh, um, a phono. I am in contact with engineers in our medical faculty have been in contact to try to uh, rebuild something like that. But of course, there is the need of someone that is interested in uh, building again something like that. Yeah, absolutely, Professor. Uh, again, uh, I think our this. Uh, yeah, this is uh, last question. I think the one question from Dr. Eva Nopita Ankawijaya. They are professor. What is your opinion about the use of wireless stethoscope? I think there are lots of wireless uh, stethoscope introduced right now. What do you, do you think? A, a very, uh, very, a very uh, simple statement. I don't like. What, what, why is that? I don't like. <laughs> very uh, simple. Don't like. They are did, not did, good. You, did you try something? Let me ju just one second. <laughs> yeah. Terima kasih pertanyaan ya Dokter Iranov kita. Jadi ini juga pertanyaan buat kita ya, karena karena juga Pak Nembaru. This is my weapon. Yeah. This is my weapon. Still this one, and this is a very very good one because it has a three part. Oh. This is the yeah. diaphragm. This is tycho. This is the bell, uh -huh. and is intermediate. Is a mixture of diaphragm and bell. And when so, when use the intermediate? Um, this is uh, good for everything, but what happens is that uh, I always use this one. Uh, mm. Then when I'm looking for low sounds, uh, I use this one. And when I have some doubt and uh, I want to have a more complete overview, this one. I, I use this less than these two. This is, uh, these are the two important. But uh, this is not wireless, is uh, this is the... <laughs> No wireless. <laughs> yeah, but because of the this wireless technology appears during this pandemic uh, to avoid close contact to the patient, right? So uh, even uh, in our hospital now, we use some extension that would uh, extend uh, the the, um, the 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 part of the stethoscope become longer to the patient. So. That way yeah, we don't have what, to cross. <laughs> what is, let me see if I saw something. Let just, just one second. <laughs> yeah. Uh, jadi memang tetap harus berhati-hati dengan situasi sekarang, tetapi tetap kualitas dari uh, stetoskop yang uh, apa namanya orisinil tetap menjadi pilihan seperti ini. Kita uh, perlu lihat lagi. Yeah. No, I have nothing to show immediately. But yeah. I, I have tried these things, but the quality of the sign is not good. Yes, yes, that's true. It's, but, but, no, yeah. uh, no doubt it works, but it's not sophisticated. Perhaps it can work for uh, aortic stenosis, mitral regurgitation, things that are strong. And uh, uh, of course, I don't want to say that it's zero, but we, we have not to expect uh, what we can expect from traditional auscultation. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think. Thank you. Thanks again, Professor, for this uh, great uh, lectures. Uh, we are very glad to have this session with you uh, to learn how a guru teach us the best way to use these main weapons in our daily practice. And hopefully this will uh, create 
more curiosity of our uh, doctors in Indonesia, especially to try more and more learning and tra uh, training, learning and try again. We have patient and make uh, some trial as auscultation with longer time, not only one or even two or three minutes, right? I think that's the best way uh, to go uh, with this. Our stethoscope is still our best way, but and uh, if we we look forward. To have another session with you uh, sometime, uh, Professor. I think we will learn. Uh, we have keep this uh, connection better between Italy and Indonesia. Uh, hopefully, we can share the things uh, uh, with more and more uh, scientific sessions, uh, meeting or uh, this kind of interaction uh, uh, more in the future. I think uh, you have something to say, Professor. No, I, I I was happy to share with you this interaction. It was an habit. Next Friday, uh, I shall ask myself what time to do at seven. <laughs> and seven in the morning in Italy. <laughs> I'm, no, no, I'm happy about that, and I really hope to to come to Indonesia again and to be in a physical environment. Up to that moment, uh, ready to interact with you at a distance. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, hopefully, you're always well and keep uh, stay stay safe each other, and uh, okay. look forward to okay. joining you. Thanks Is again. For uh, your time and uh, this uh, very clear uh, lecture and training, also for the team, for for the all the team in the Padua. Uh, uh, hopefully, we can have another session uh, together anymore. Thank you, Professor Liseto. Terima kasih semuanya. Sehat selalu. Uh, sampai bertemu lagi pada acara acara mendatang. Bisa dilihat di website kita yekavi.org dan uh, tetap sehat semua. Terima kasih. Selamat sore. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.